Let's solve the most popular lead code question, which is called Tusum. We are given an array of integers and a target value, and we need to find two numbers in the array that add up to the target value. Our task is to return the indices of these two numbers. For example, if we have an array of 2, 7, 11, and 15, and our target is 9, we need to return 0 and 1 as the output, because the number at index 0 is 2 and the number at index 1 is 7 and together they add up to our target value which is 9. Now let's talk about the brute force approach to solving this problem. We can compare each element with every other element in the array. If we find a pair that adds up to the target sum, we'll return their indices. Let's take a look at this example and the target value of 9. We start by comparing the first number with all other numbers. We find that 4 plus 2 equals to 6, which is not our target value. So we move our second pointer to the next index. Now we see that 4 plus 11 equals to 15, which is again not our target value. So we move our pointer 2 to the next index. And 4 plus 7 is 11, which is again not our target value. So now we move our pointer 1 to the first index and we compare the second value, which is 2, with all other numbers. We see that 2 plus 11 is 13, which is not our target value, but 2 plus 7 is 9, and we have found our target value. So we can return the indices of 2 and 7, which will be 1 and 3. So our output will be an array with these indexes. In this brute force solution, we will have two nested loops, the outer loop iterates through each element in the array, so this is our pointer 1. And our inner loop checks every element after the current outer loop element, which will be our pointer 2. We compare the sum of two elements to the target value, and if they match, we return the indices of those elements, and if no solution is found, we simply return an empty array. Although this approach works, it becomes inefficient as the array grows larger. As you can see, the runtime of this is 28% compared to all other solutions, because we need to loop through all pairs of numbers, resulting in a time complexity of O of n squared, where n is the number of elements in the array. This approach is not ideal for large datasets. However, the space complexity remains O of 1, since we only require a few extra variables. Now let's see how we can improve our solution. The thing to notice here is that for each number, we are just looking for the difference between the target and this value. So for 4, we are looking for 9 minus 4, which is 5. This is the only value we can add to 4 that will equal to target. So we don't have to check anything else except that 5 exists in this array. But in the array we can only search by index and not by values. To be able to search by value, we need to convert this array into a hash map, also known as objects in JavaScript. We can loop through this array and store the numbers we have already seen as keys and their indices as values. This way we can easily check if the complement of the current number exists in the hash map. We start by initializing an empty hash map. We can call it a num map, for example, which is an empty object at the beginning. We iterate through the array. In this solution, we can iterate through the array only once, unlike the nested loops in the brute force approach. For every element, we calculate its complement, which is the difference between the target and the current element. Then, we check if the complement exists in our hash map. If it does, we found our pair and we return the indices. Otherwise, we keep adding our numbers to the hash map. And if no solution is found, we simply return an empty array. As you can see, this is much faster than our brute force approach, and the time complexity of this is O of n, because we are only iterating once on our array, 
and n is the number of elements in the array. It is more efficient than the brute force approach for large datasets. But for space complexity, this one is O of n in the worst case scenario, where we store all the elements of the array in the hash map. Hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.